fellow diamond painting addicts, and welcome back to Diamond Painting Anonymous. Today I am here to uh, work on section eight for day eight of my advent project. So I'm just going to rip it off and get started with section number eight. So I am going to start my timer and then I am going to zoom you guys in so that you can see what I'm working on, hopefully. And get started. So pull my chair up here and let's see, what do I want to start with? I am going to, oh, my cord is being annoying. One second. Okay. Um, let's see. I'm going to start with K, I think. So let me start with K. So, whoops. May need to refresh my glue dot again just to make sure that it's working properly. So I'm filming this quite a bit later than I had anticipated, which we had lots of things to do today. So that's okay. Just wish I would have gotten on the ball a little bit quicker because of course, what invariably happens when I wait this late to film a video is that it will take forever to upload once I am ready to do that. So I will just cross my fingers that everything goes well. And the internet is being weird today. So I had my Goodreads was not working. I thought it was because I updated my iPad because I got a notification that I needed to update my iOS. And then suddenly my Goodreads was not working. And I use my Goodreads. I read a lot. And I challenge myself every year to read a certain amount of books. Sometimes I go over, sometimes I just meet it. I usually, the last, I think this is my third year of doing it. I started doing it when I got my Kindle Unlimited subscription because now I can read so many books. I read a lot of trashy romance novels and I read other things, but. Um, I challenge myself to read a certain number of books each year and I keep track of them because I read so many of them. I don't always remember all the titles and also people change their covers a lot on Kindle Unlimited. And so I'll see an author that I like and I'll think, oh, I haven't read that book. And then when I go to read it, I'm like, mm, this seems familiar. I've read this book and I'll find out that they just changed the cover of it. And so I didn't recognize it, but I've already read it. So putting the name of the book on my keeping track of it in Goodreads helps me avoid that. Because sometimes, you know, you would think if I'd already read it and all they did was change the cover, that Kindle would remember that you've read that book. Sometimes it does and sometimes it doesn't. Because sometimes they may have made just like some, you know, small changes to whatever they wrote. But they'll like upload a whole new copy of the novel. And so um, in that instance, you know, Kindle doesn't, won't recognize it as a book that you've already read, even if you do. So also, you know, Kindle Unlimited remembers when you've read a book because I will open it up and it will say, you know, it'll be at the end of it because I've already read it. 
But then it will recommend that book to me in my recommendations. Like, why are you recommending me this book? I've already read it. Like, if you can remember when I download and open it that I was on page 99 of 100, why can't, why are you recommending it to me? I don't understand how their system works sometimes, but. So, anyway, Goodreads was not working and it was down and I went and checked and the whole, it wasn't, it wasn't just me that it was down for. So I thought, okay, well, I'll just wait and do it later. And didn't think anything of it. And so, um, but I don't, I leave books in my Kindle Unlimited library until I have recorded them in Goodreads so that I know how many books I've read and also what books I've read. So, um, I challenged myself to read 600 books this year and I am at 600 books. So I'm proud of myself. Anything I read from here to the end of the year, is gravy for my self challenge, my book challenge. Do I have any more bees? I don't see any. Okay. Um, last year I read 900 books. Well, I think that was my goal. I think I exceeded that, but anyway, I read really fast and I read you know, I'm not reading in-depth classics and stuff like that. Like I said, I'm reading, I read a lot of trashy romance novels, so I'm not trying to remember every single plot twist and everything. So, um, but I've always been a fast reader ever since I was a kid. Um, I've just been a fast reader. So anyway, all of that to say that Goodreads was down so I thought, well, you know, I'll go and I'll just get some more books to read while I'm waiting for Goodreads to come back up. So I went out and I was looking for more, more books to read and I found a couple and I tried to download them to my Kindle um, to download them and it wouldn't work. It just kept downloading and it wouldn't ever finish. And it just kept buffering basically. And I finally got one book to download, but the other two were just sitting there halfway downloaded. And I was like, is Amazon down? Cause if Amazon is down, half the internet is down. So I don't know what was going on, but we, um, eventually I it just, you know, whatever, it must've fixed itself or someone fixed it and it started working. So, but it was just weird. So my husband was having issues too with a couple of things. So of course he was having different issues with Amazon. He has been, bless his heart, trying to order me a Christmas gift that I wanted and has been struggling with it because the first item that they sent. It was a pair of shoes that I wanted. I wanted some high top chucks and the ones they sent him were not the high tops. And so he had to send them back. And this was after the package was supposedly lost and he was trying to get a refund. And then they finally showed up, but they were the wrong one. So he had to send them back. And then today he's been waiting on the other pair that he ordered to show up. And it's been, I guess, a week or so since they were supposed to be here. So he finally contacted the seller and they were like, well, cause it showed that they had been picked up like a week ago for someone to deliver them and they've never shown up. And they're like, well, we think the package is just lost, which, you know, is kind of crazy to me. Like, where did it go? Someone picked it up and then what? It just fell off the truck. Someone just decided they wanted them. I don't know. But, um, they didn't show up. So they were like, well, we're going to give you a refund. And so he was asking me to check our account to make sure that the refund had come through. And so then he got to looking at it and they had given him a refund 
of the purchase price of the sale price of the item, but not for the sales tax that we paid. And I was like, uh, you need to contact them because we are not paying sales tax on an item that we didn't buy. Like that's nuts. I mean, there was no sale because you're giving us a refund. So why would we be paying sales tax? It doesn't make any sense. And so I was asking him, you know, are you talking to Amazon or are you talking to the sellers? And he said, well, I think I'm talking to the sellers, but the item was fulfilled via Amazon. I don't even know how that works. But anyway, he sent them a, a question and was like, uh, why are you not refunding me for the entire amount? Why is it not showing the sales tax being taken off too? And he never got a response, but about an hour later, he checked his Amazon account and suddenly it showed the entire amount being refunded. So see that kind of stuff is why, and you know, maybe someone just made a mistake and they weren't trying to be shady about it, but I have trust issues, man. I don't, I, I, that's why I don't pay any of our like medical bills until I get, they've been processed by our insurance company, one, and then two, I go through and take what the insurance company sends me, and then I compare it against um, the bills that I'm sent. And I would say 99% of the time, you know, providers are very good about taking the write-offs that they're supposed to, and you know, only billing me for the amount that I actually owe. But I will say I have also had some pretty darn um, shady providers who would send me a bill and show what the insurance paid, but not take off the amount that they're supposed to write off. So say, um, you know, for instance, my husband's surgery was his doctor. That's a whole nother story, but his doctor um, charged us 900 bucks for the surgery. And he had to write off, I think, 300 of it or something like that. I forget the exact amount, but he had to write off some of it. And then, of course, the insurance paid a portion and we had the portion left that we owed. And... Um, Luckily, my husband's deductible had been met. If you don't know what all of that means, uh, because you don't live in America with our healthcare system, count yourself lucky. Um, so there was that. Um, and then so our, it showed the amount that he charged, and then it showed the write-off amount that they had to take, and then it showed the amount the insurance had actually paid and showed what we owed, which matched what was on my forms from the insurance company. So I just paid it. However, I have had um, a company bill me in the past, a physician bill me in the past, where all they did was show what they charged and then what the insurance paid them and then tried to send me a bill due for the entire rest of the amount. And it didn't show their write-off. And I used to work for an insurance company paying medical and dental claims. And so that's part of the reason I don't pay anything because one, insurance companies can make mistakes. Two, um, providers can make mistakes. Oh, I just saw V that I missed, darn it. Providers can make mistakes and, you know, nobody's looking out for you but you. So, um, I basically contacted them and said, look, I don't know what you're trying to pull, but I don't owe this amount and you need to send me a corrected bill. I could have just paid it with the amount that I knew that I owed and I probably would have never heard from them again. Excuse me, just one second. I need a drink. One second. <coughs> Pardon me. Um... I could have just paid it and they likely would never have billed me for the rest of it. However, they're not supposed to do that because if it had been someone other than me or someone, you know, older who wasn't paying as much attention or didn't understand how things worked, would have just paid that bill in full 
and they would have paid more than they owed. And that is wrong. It's not exactly fraud, but it's pretty skeezy as a business practice. So I don't pay anything until my insurance processes it. That's what, when my husband went in for his surgery and he was talking to the hospital, they were like, well, your insurance, you know, we've contacted them and yes, they're going to cover it, but you're going to owe this much. And they wanted him to just pay that up front. And I said, no, we're not doing that. We'll, we'll make some sort of a payment if that's required, but I'm not, they wanted like five or $600 up front. And I said, no, I'm not giving you guys that kind of money because the thing is, once the insurance processes it, then if we owed less than that, because of deductibles and out of pockets and other reasons, again, if you don't know what those things are, you're so lucky. Um, if, you know, say we hadn't met our deductible prior to his surgery, and then by the time he had his surgery, we had, the amount we owed would be wildly different. And so I said, I'm not going to give you that entire amount. We'll happily give you a down payment of, you know, something, but I'm not going to pay the whole amount before we even have the surgery. That's crazy because I know they're going to have a write-off from the insurance company. So, um, and the hospital was like, okay, you know, they were happy just to get some money, but see, that's the thing. People don't know to ask. Um, I was watching, um, a YouTube channel and it was a, a, it's a woodworking company, but they were, they'd started off as a very small company with just a few employees and they had gotten big enough that they were looking at providing health benefits for their employees. And the guy that was the CEO had started looking into, you know, what that entailed, what kind of coverage they could offer, how much it was going to cost. And he was just flabbergasted at the ridiculousness of some of the hoops and things that are one required and two, the, the stupid rules that you have to follow. And he, um, he just said, this is ridiculous. Well, in the process of them talking about that with other people, one of the people they met with who was, I think an attorney or something, he belonged to a, uh, Mennonite group and Mennonites are kind of like the Amish. If you know what the Amish are, um, less strict about certain things, but kind of an, an offshoot group. We have a lot of them around here in the area where I live. Um, and there's different degrees of Mennonite is the way I would explain it. Um, we around here, we have what they call Holderman Mennonite, but then we also have people who just call themselves Mennonite. And anyway, none of that is relevant. The, uh, the point is that he belonged to this Mennonite group, which is essentially a religious group, and they don't have insurance. What they have is a group of people and they use that group of people essentially as crowdfunding. And so rather than paying insurance premiums and things, they all uh, contribute uh, either to a fund or they just, when he said, you know, the way that they did it was when someone got sick, they would say, well, okay, you know, what is the cost of the procedure going to be? And say it was going to be $10,000 then either, I don't know if it was the person who was getting the procedure or somebody would approach the provider and say, okay, we're willing to pay 30% of that or whatever it is. It probably isn't that low, but, but some percentage of it and we'll pay in cash and we'll pay up front. And a lot of providers will agree to that because they would rather know that they've got that money coming in because a lot of them know that they're going to take big uh, write-offs from insurance companies. Anyway, the reason they agree to that is because they know they have a much better chance of getting the money out of the insurance companies than they do um, individuals. 
So, um, you know, I went through the same thing. Uh, we had a relative who owed a quite sizable um, medical bill and had been making payments on it and then fell into some issues and had been able to make, unable to make payments. And so then was looking at, you know, going to collections because they wouldn't, weren't able to pay it. Again, if you don't understand how any of this works because your healthcare system doesn't do any of this, count yourself lucky. Um, anyway, so we approached the provider and said, okay, look, you know, there's been issues. They don't have the money. We will pay X amount and you write off the rest of the debt. And they went, okay. Because at that point, they would rather have had the, the, the portion that they were going to collect than waste more money trying to, to get money from somebody who didn't have it to pay them anyway. So, um, yeah, the whole system around here is just kind of crazy. So, anyway... And I think at one point I had a point to that big long rant. I'm so sorry about that. Uh, as you can tell, I feel very strongly about the way our, our system works here in America. <sighs> so I dream of having my own policy where I get to decide what is covered and what isn't. In this mythical someday where I own a big corporation and I can just be like, you know what? I'm going to pick and choose. Ha ha ha. Don't know if that's ever going to happen, but we'll see. Okay. I don't know. I feel like this part kind of looks like a leaf. And I'm assuming that may be part of a leaf too, but I don't know. And I can't decide if this is a flower or some kind of bug. Like this kind of looks like a little swirl here. Oh, I don't even know if you guys can see that section. I'm pointing to the section below this one. Here I am thinking you guys can see it. I'm like, oh, you probably can't even tell what that section looks like because I'm zoomed in. Well, I'll point it out again when I get to the end of this section anyway. So, We did a lot of running around today. We went to a, a local place um, that is in the big town near where I live. It is a place that sells all kinds of nuts and candy and confections. And it is very, very popular and is always a madhouse around the holidays. They sell like holiday nut mixes and stuff. When I very first started going there, it was a very small place. And most of the people I'd met had never even heard of it. And oh my gosh, I hope you guys can't hear my stomach growling. I actually had to edit out my stomach growling the other day. How embarrassing is that? I don't know why it's growling. I've had dinner. Anyway, nobody had ever heard of this place and it was, it was a Christmas tradition for us. We never, we never went there, which sounds crazy. Now that I think about it only went there at Christmas. And maybe that's just because when I was younger, that's the only time my parents, it was a splurge. So that was the only time we really went because it was expensive. Um, but it just can't kind of grew into this Christmas tradition for us. So every Christmas I go there and I get, some of their fancy holiday boxes and I always give them to my siblings at Christmas because that's the only time we ever had them and going to this place is insane they have way expanded since I was a kid they used to kind of be in this like a warehouse really and you know, you walk around and people would weigh out whatever you wanted. And as a kid, they had all kinds of candy that you would normally not see in like grocery stores and stuff. So it was kind of a, a specialty place to get things as well. 
Um, it's not so much that anymore, although they do have things that you can't get anywhere else, um, but not as many. But um, anyway, it was kind of small and the aisles were very narrow and it was always, always, always clogged with people, especially at Christmas, which was the only time we ever went. So I guess it could be clogged with people at other times. I wouldn't know because that's the only time I go. But anyway, um, like literally sometimes we would have to hold each other's hands walking through to make sure we didn't get separated from my parents. I say my parents, really, it was just my mom. My dad would never have been caught dead in that place when it was that crowded. He hated crowds. Unless it was a Formula One race, then he would put up with them. But um, anyway, we went there today and I wanted to go early thinking that we would um, go before, it, you know, or be there right when it opened before it got really busy. And for whatever reason, the website that I looked on, it showed us the wrong time. So we ended up getting there like an hour and a half before they actually opened. So we ended up going to get breakfast and then coming back. But we were still there about 25 minutes before they opened. So we thought, well, we'll just sit in the parking lot. 25 minutes before this place opened and their parking lot was almost already completely full. Now, they have an overflow parking lot now, kind of off to the side of the building, and, oh, probably 10 years or so, or so ago, I think, it may have been longer, I don't know, my sense of time is skewed, is, is skewed, the older I get, the more skewed it is, because, you know, the 90s was just 10 years ago, right? Um... Anyway, about 10 years or so ago, they um, expanded into a larger warehouse next door. So there's a lot more room for stuff, for one thing. So they carry a lot more things than they used to. Um, and the old warehouse is now kind of where they do all of their processing. So um, they have more room for items. And then they also, you know, they're... Their processing is now in a separate area, so that gave them room too. Um, luckily for them, I think they just moved into this warehouse next door. I don't think they built it, but maybe they did. I don't know. Anyway, even expanding into a newer spot and way expanding. I mean, when I went there with my mom, it's kind of downtown. So there would have been maybe 10, 15 parking spots directly in front of the building. And then people would basically park in the street. And now they have a good probably 30 or so parking spots directly in front of their building. And then they have an overflow parking lot as well that probably has more than that. Um, and it still is jam-packed. And we got there, like I said, half an hour before it was going to open. And it was still you know, the parking lot almost completely full. Now, when we went in, people were still kind of milling around and deciding what they wanted. I told my husband, they now offer online ordering where you just walk in and walk up to the, the counter and tell them your name and they give you your order. I told my husband, I'm doing that next year. <laughs> because much as I love kind of walking around and looking and seeing everything, and he does too, um, sometimes it's just so packed in there that I just can't handle it. I am not a people person on the best of days, and especially after the last year and a half or so, I guess it's been almost two years now. I mean, basically since March of 2020, when we all kind of had to stay home and you know since then I don't really get out a whole lot I go to work but we don't really go grocery shopping much anymore every once in a while we'll go into you know a store and do like our grocery shopping or something like that but other than that um, I don't really get out a whole lot and so my tolerance for being in places with lots of people was not high to begin with and it is even less now so, um, 
I get to a point where like when we went in today, I was like, okay, I'm going to give you the money because I'm going to handle it as long as I can. But I may get to a point where I'm like, I have to get out of here and I will just leave him to either finish looking if he's not done or I'll be like, you pay. I have to get out of here. So, um, yeah, it wasn't horrible this morning. It was still way more crowded than I would have anticipated given how early we were there. But, you know, it is the holiday and I know it's always a hugely popular place. So I counted myself lucky that we got in and out as quickly as we did. So I wish we would have had a little bit more time to look around, but quite honestly, I don't need all the candy anyway. So... Okay. Sorry to make you listen to my mini rant there, but there we go. Um, this section is now done. So I don't know that it adds anything to the overall picture. Let me zoom out here and see if I can get the whole thing in the picture for you. So I think that gets most of it. So we've got this flower up here, part of a flower. I'm assuming that's the stem there. And then down here, like I said, it kind of looks like a flower, but then this looks like a little, like, is that like a snail shell or something? I feel like this section here looks the same as these flower petals, but that looks like a leaf. So I don't know. The mystery of it. Oh, speaking of that, I saw today Diamond Art Club is now going to offer mystery paintings. What? I saw somebody talking about it and I went to their website, but I didn't see any offered yet. So I don't know if that's a new thing that's coming, but I don't know. How does that work? Because mystery paintings, you don't know what they are but they're licensed. So if they're licensed, are they just going to use stock art so they don't have to tell you who the artist is? Or is it going to be licensed art and they just give you the artist's name? So like, I think that would be cool if that's how it's going to work. That you like say, oh, I've never done a uh, Hannah Lynn, for example. I want a mystery painting by Hannah Lynn. So you know it's going to be by Hannah Lynn, but you don't know which one it's going to be. That would be cool. Or... Hmm. I'm curious. So we'll have to wait and see, but now I'm curious. Uh, I haven't seen any new releases from them yet this week, but who knows? So there we go, guys. Uh, done with day eight of my Advent project. I hope you are having fun. I am. Tomorrow we will be moving on to section nine, which is right here. So it will connect to this one and I'll finish that little corner right there, I think. And maybe we'll get a clue there. We'll see. As always, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, before you leave, don't forget to do all the things. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Smash that subscribe button to help me out. And hit that bell notification icon so that you can be informed of future uploads. As always, thanks for watching, guys.